Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle, the podcast. I am the host, the Honey Badger, here to give it to you straight and transparent about the RV business, as well as other things. Today, we're going to go a little longer than we normally do because there is a lot to cover. A lot's happened in the last two days, including used RV financing. There are things you need to know if you're shopping and going to take a loan out on a used motorhome, fifth wheel, toy hauler, travel trailer, etc. Big important things, okay? Uh, the next thing we're going to cover is I really want to cover uh, recalls. I'm really pissed off with Forest River right now. I sell two of the products that are on the recall list and it's ridiculous ridiculous what's going on and and I'm going to get fired up when it comes to that segment so let me give you guys fair warning there's going to be cussing and passion in this episode and I'm going to try to keep it toned down I'm going to try not to go off like a sailor but if you have young children present while you're playing this you might want to listen or watch this later okay um, what I really want to start with is I want to clear up a few things and bring in some miscellaneous stuff that I think is really important that's going to help people with their research, especially if you're buying a fifth wheel or fifth wheel toy hauler. And I don't care if you're buying used or new, this information we're going to go over right now may be the most important information that you're going to get on the internet. And the first thing I want to start with is there are a lot of corporate RV dealership YouTubers. And let me say that again because I know that kind of came out wrong. Corporate RV dealership YouTubers whose dealerships' livelihoods depend on certain brands sold on the lot. And we have to understand that these corporate YouTubers are contractually more than likely uh, forced to say certain things about a product. Okay, um, it's it's hard when you're in a corporate environment of any kind, especially if your dealership is on the stock exchange, if it has a lot of financial investors, if it has products. Um, where it has the you know one or two or three of the locations are predominantly needed profit from certain brands being sold. Give you an example. The best example is what's going on with Grand Design. Okay, all the allegations of the frame failure, all the allegations of the way they're treating customers, and I have some news on that front as well here that I'm going to include in this segment. And let's say that your dealership or let's say your corporate RV dealership has 20, 25 locations and 18 of them depend on the sale of Grand Design fifth wheels. Your, your, your company and Grand Design are more than likely going to tell you you can't say anything negative. Anytime you hear a little fish, you need to go squash him. Because let me put it this way, I'm expecting retaliation and I don't care. I care about the customer because the customer is what's going to keep the businesses, the dealerships and the factories in business. This is the hierarchy of importance. Customer is the top priority in the RV business or should be. Because without you spending the money, without you taking the loans out, period, end of report, there's no industry. Okay? Number two is the dealerships. They should be priority two. Because without them, without their ability to service things, without them dealing with the customer face-to-face -face, like we have to on a daily basis, especially when things go wrong, we are the second backbone of this industry because if we just tell you pound sand go call the factory 
You're not going to buy anything. You want to be feel like you're being taken care of and protected by the folks that you're purchasing it from. And then third, fourth, fifth, all tied for factory YouTube influencers. And no offense to these guys. No offense to anybody, including myself. We don't matter. The YouTubers, we don't matter. If you're a carp corporate RV dealership YouTuber and you think you're above everybody else, you need to go look in the mirror, man or lady. You need to go look at yourself in the mirror and knock yourself down a few pegs. Especially if you claim that you're the most transparent person in the industry. You should see half the emails and comments I get. Like, finally, a guy actually is talking about the real stuff, not everything's so gorgeous and beautiful. So I, I want to go over some history things, okay? And I want everybody to follow through with this. First of all, you have Jayco. Jayco was bought out by Thor Industries, but if you look at the way Jayco operates, they still operate the same way they operated before the family sold it. You have a lot of the same key team members at Jayco. It, it's still very well oil machine, and their customer service is, is amazing. I'm not jealous I don't sell them, but it would be really nice to sell them one day. I sold them used. I've sold them very much. I, that's all I have is sold them used. But Jayco has done an excellent job. Now, do they get it right every time? Absolutely not. What company does, what manufacturer does, nobody in any industry gets it 100% right every single time. But I've been talking with a gentleman, and I'm pretty sure he's going to listen to this that him and I have been communicating back and forth about his uh, Jayco Seismic fifth wheel. He has frame failure on that coach. Jayco has been nothing, at least in his mind, been nothing but communicative. He has not felt dismissed. He has not felt like he's not getting help. Complete opposite of the allegations I get from customers about Grand Design. Okay. And I'm uh, there's a point to this, so bear with me. Okay. So, you know, and he's in a complicated situation. Now, the other part of that situation I want everybody to realize is the dealerships he's working with to get out of the rig along with Jayco. Okay. The dealerships don't want anything to do with the trade because of the frame failure. Okay, this is what I was talking about. Liz Amazing, okay, did a pretty cool video. I'm going to talk about that as we go along. But she even said that some of the dealer people she's talked to don't even want a grand design momentum or solitude in trade right now because there's too much liability. Okay, I already gave that information to you guys. I'll say it again. A lot of dealers are quietly, and it's a very silent thing. I can get you can refute me all you want. If you're a corporate RV dealership YouTuber and you sell Grand Design products, you don't have a leg to stand on right now. You need to be quiet when it comes to this comment because you don't know. Because no one's going to tell you. They tell me because they trust me. Dealerships that do not sell Grand Design products are worried about this frame problem because of the way it's been handled allegedly okay now let's go step take a step back for a second okay the step back for a second is let's look at some history Keystone RV 1996 starts the selling process in 2000 Completes the sale in 2001 to Thor Industries. Okay. Grand Design RV. Starts in 2012. Completes the sale to Winnebago in 2016. That was less than four years. F four years. Three and a half. Okay. There was a boat company. And I'm going to look at... Uh, um, There's another company, Barletta Pontoon Boats. 
bought out by Winnebago. You're going to find some common names between Keystone, Grand Design, and Barletta, Barletta pontoon boats. You're going to find common names that are connected to Brinkley RV. So if they if if Keystone sold and Grand Design sold, I'll just leave it at that. I'll let you decide. So when you're shopping, right now it's just so difficult to shop for a fifth wheel because the the Grand Design brand was put on this big pedestal. Brinkley is now being put on this grand pedestal in a very short amount of time. It isn't something that grew. It's just like, for example, guys, here, here's a great thing. How many one-hit wonders were out there? How many guys made one fabulous record, went platinum, and then went bust afterward? So here's what I want you guys to do. Before you buy a Brinkley, before you buy a Grand Design, before you buy a Jayco, a Keystone, a Forest River, go Google the owners. Go look at the history. Go look at what the recent history is and the past history. There's one thing about people in general. If you want to know what they're going to do in the future, look at their past. So if you're a, uh, again, I'm going to say this again. I know it's a little repetitive and beaten over the head. But if you're a corporate RV dealership YouTuber and your company depends on the sale of Grand Design RV or Brinkley RV, you should have absolutely nothing to say unless you want the transparency part of it. You have nothing to say about me. And you have nothing to say about the owners that are having these problems. And you have nothing to say about what the future may hold unless you understand the past and patterns of folks. Okay. The other thing I really want to talk about is, look, I'm not the biggest fan of Liz Amazing. I'm not. Okay. Okay it's not because I don't think she's she's a necessity. I do think that what she wants to provide and where she's at is a necessity. What my opinion about things, hey, I'm on the fence. I don't like her style, but I love the fact that she's a capitalist and I love the fact that she's going and getting her bag of money from YouTube. And, you know, the two go hand in hand. You You, you got to be appreciative of it. And that's not talking crap. That's actual, like, appreciation for what's going on. If I had 110,000 subscribers and I was making 30, 40 grand a month in ad revenue, because that's roughly what you start getting at that level, okay, <laughs> I would straight out, like, I would do videos every single day. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing, I wouldn't have this headset. I would have like I'd be a little more professional about things. Okay. I'd probably hire a crew to help me out with this podcast and everything. But that's set aside. Okay. Her last video, her latest video she did is a seven minute video. I love the first five minutes. The first five minutes to me was the best content she has done in a long time. And I'm very appreciative of her mentioning the same things I've been mentioning for a while about how the fear level from dealerships is increasing about, you know, trade in values and how to evaluate a momentum or a solitude that was built after 2017. It, it's so hard. Because, you know, to piggyback on what she said and to kind of give more context in what she said, it's not that they're afraid they can't sell them. It's the liability of selling them. Okay. So I'll give you an example. Let's say by the time this is all said and done that we're going to use a random number. We're going to use the number 10,000. Okay. We don't know what the real number is, but let's say it's 10,000 momentums and 10,000 solitudes that have frame failure. Okay. If that's the case, that's a lot of fifth wheels. And 
it's it's going to come to a point and come to a head just like it did with weekend warrior that if this isn't dealt with properly from their corporate perspective it, it's it's going to melt your value okay and it's not because of what your coach is worth or what it should be worth or what the lending worth is it's because they're going to look at it like if this thing snaps going down the road and kills somebody fuck that dealership is in deep shit okay you're going to see most of your momentums most of your solitudes are going to get sold private party and and here's the thing guys if you go look at all the state laws in the United States I'm not sure about provincial law in Canada but I know that 39 states in California or sorry not California in the United States 39 states in the United States including California make dealerships liable for safety issues on used vehicles of any kind boats power sports stuff cars there's only a few real true as is states okay so that puts a lot of liability on the dealerships and just like with weekend warrior back in the day they'd go off to the auction and you'll you, you, there's a lot of great stories about people who got bought 2009 2010 weekend warrior fifth wheels for like three to five grand at the auction in 2011 and 12. I, I've met several people that are like, yeah, I bought it at the auction for like, one guy told me he bought it at the auction for like 600 bucks. Because it's it's just one of those situations where they'd rather have it go through a private auction or an auction that states that have a as is, that's not responsible for safety issues. So if you are a Grand Design Momentum or Grand Design Solitude owner my biggest recommendation to if you're looking to trade out of it or or sell yours or you know maybe put on consignment somewhere very much try to sell it on your own first at this point okay you know if if i would show you my trade sheet but my trade sheet first question on it is especially if it's a, a fifth wheel especially if it's a grand design solitude or momentum it's the first question is have you experienced frame failure have you had it inspected for f the extreme frame flex or frame failure first two questions okay why because i don't want to put anybody up for liability number one okay number two is like i actually had a guy come out a, 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 a third-party inspector come out on a momentum fifth wheel I've had here on consignment uh, for almost now eight months hasn't sold by the way guys how about this a 397 th I think it's 397 or 376 th whatever it is it's got a small nine foot garage like a golf cart garage or or front living room momentum 2017 it's priced under 50 grand fully loaded decent shape hasn't sold in nine months just kind of give you an idea guys I had it now here's the thing I'm not gonna the guy lives in New York I'm not gonna force him to come pick it up so I had it inspected for the frame flex it passed but then again I feel weird when I if I if I sell it which I more than likely not going to because nobody wants it because here we go what we're talking about is all over the internet and can't you know Liz amazing was exactly right in saying that to remove comments to try to squash the little fish like myself only makes the word stronger when you try to silence people and this this is where politics come into play okay and I'm gonna give you and then we're gonna get into the used RVs okay politics teaches us a lesson here every single day and I don't care what your politics are because this isn't about politics this is just an example 
the harder the Democrats try to shut Trump up, the greater his following becomes and the stronger and more believable he becomes. Well, if you just deal with the problem at hand, and that's the real issue with anything, politics, businesses, etc. But then again, if you go look at the financial statement from Winnebago, and you look on, if you go to Edgar uh, SEC, and you go look up Winnebago's quarter two fiscal, and you go to page four, it says everything about warranty. And if you go read that on your own, it'll blow your mind. It, it, it'll just, you got Newmar, you got Winnebago Motorized, Winnebago Tobles, Grand Design RV, you got the, pond, the, the boat companies. And to go look at where their little stockpile started over a year ago to what it is today, it's spooky. Very spooky. Okay. Now, used RVs. Oh, one last thing real quick. The one thing I want to refute, and it's not because I don't trust her informant, but one thing I want to refute that Liz Amazing keeps saying over and over again is the words class action lawsuit over the everybody's frames. First off, I've been asking for information for about four or five, four months now, sorry, four months now. You guys are still sending me some amazing information, okay? If you want to send me your story, let me know it. You know, the email is in the description box of the episode, no matter if you're on Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, etc. But here's what I want to point out. Lippert is not the major problem. They are a problem. I'm not excusing them. But they are not the major problem. And they have an out. And the out is this. They build frames for the super majority of the industry. And subsidiaries of Lippert, under the Lippert corporate umbrella, sell and build frames for the super majority of the industry. Okay. Okay. The problem is, is this is predominantly, allegedly, with Grand Design Solitude and Momentum. It is, it is a problem with other manufacturers, but not nearly at the scale that is allegedly with Grand Design. And if you want more information on that, in the description box below, I put another, I put a past episode I had on that, talking about how frames are are basically requested by the manufacturer of the RV. They go to Lippert and every other frame company that's used and say, hey, look, we want you, this is how we're going to, we want your frame to be, our frame to be made. And Lippert does that. Okay. Now the rest of it, quality of steel, that's all argumentative. Okay. We're not going to get deep into that. What we are going to talk about next is used RV financing, okay? We've had some big, big problems with used RVs right now because the blending value dropped, and we've already talked about that a lot, okay? What I, what really happened in the last three days is they have changed their programs, okay? So I'll give you an example. Normally, we can get between 100... We, we can normally get about 120% what we call loan to value on a used RV compared to wholesale book. And what I mean by that is not what you see free online, the, oh, let me click everything and, oh, there's a value. No, that's all bullshit. Okay, that's all bullshit. The lending book, just like what KBB has a lending book, you can't add any of the options for the majority of lenders. So you take wholesale book, you times it by 110%. That's what they call your allowable ads. And generally we can get 120% of that. 
Well, now everything changed. Now, most of the lenders only want to go 100% loan to value. So let's say the book out is $10,000. Okay, so the allowable ads, we had 110%, that's 11 grand. The majority of lenders right now are going, no, we're not going above that $11,000. It's going to be a bigger thing because I think right now they will be flexible with a few customers depending on credit, depending on the year model of the coach. But we're starting to see a trend where they are tightening how much money they want to lend out on used and especially here's the big thing most used RVs okay watch this most used RVs that people are buying are 8 to 10 years old right now because price and affordability and the older the unit is the stricter they're getting about how much they're gonna let you borrow now, this affects mainly the sellers, so mainly your private party sellers and your dealerships, okay? I just lost, what, $3,000 selling my former home, the Sundance that you guys are used to seeing me in. Now I'm in a Lance trailer. Yeah, baby, nice. I love this Lance trailer. Anyway, uh, I lost $3,000 selling it because the book dropped so bad and now these people had good credit, really good credit. It's a 2021. And they're like, nope, we're not going to let you borrow more than 100% of the wholesale value. And I think what's happening, I, can't, I haven't confirmed it yet because I got to still talk to some of the banks. Um, and most people are in and out with that total eclipse that's going on. And you got a bunch of other things like spring break for some of these folks. Uh, just started happening people went on vacation for Easter weekend or Easter week and you know aren't quite settled back in but as soon as I find out I'll find out but I think the repo rate went up I think the repossession rate is starting to climb up which is not a good thing guys because most guys are like oh that's great that means we're going to be able to go get deals we're going to go get go get trailers and toy haulers for pennies on the dollar that's not true because the banks still have to recover their money. They're not going to get bailed out. Well, they might if Trump's in office. Ha, ha, ha. Not a, no, I'm not a Trump fan. And just, I, I want to make this clear real quick, guys. I'm not a Democrat and I'm not a Republican. And I hate politics. The, the only politician, politicians are all crooked, in my opinion. Every one of them. Doesn't matter if they hold a red card, a blue card, a purple card, a yellow card. Doesn't matter what their politics are. They're all crooked and corrupt, in my opinion. So I don't even bother with them. Like, pfft. I, I, I'd rather deal with what's important in life, which is helping customers and helping RVers and taking care of my family. Right? Okay. Getting back to it. the uh, So that's the important... It's going to be more and more important to have good percentage of money down to be able to buy a used RV. Okay. So for some of you that have been saying they're going, I'm going to go get a used one. Okay. If you don't have very much down, you're going to be limited. So, you know, this is the best thing you could do. The best thing you can do is get pre-approved through a credit union or through a bank. Okay. Go to the dealership. Go to the private party, grab the sheet, whatever the book out sheet is, take it to your credit union, and see how much they'll let you borrow. If you don't have enough down payment to get what the dealership thinks that they can get bought. Just in case. So that way you don't miss out on a good piece. Okay. I've had plenty of people that I offer to go to their own credit union. Most people don't like to do it because the interest rates right now are better with banks than they are with credit unions. That, you know, that's a fluctuation thing. But you're really going to have to start making a decision what's important. You can't get everything. So what's important? Price, payment, or down payment? 
You're going to have to pick the one that's the most important and focus in on that. If you got all the money in the world to put down, then focus on price. If you are limited on how much you have down payment wise for a used RV, then you need to focus and solely focus and find something that fits in your down payment budget. Okay, so that's my advice to you guys is you got to kind of pick one of the three boxes and roll with it. Okay, because that's where we're headed. Okay, here's what I am going to tell you. The sooner you buy your used RV, the less of a chance you're going to get affected by this. So the biggest piece of advice I can give you is go buy now. Don't wait till summer. Don't wait till August. Don't wait till next year. Do it now, especially if you're buying used. No matter if you're buying from a private party or you're buying from a dealership, stop waiting. Go get it. Because especially if you're taking out a loan, this is the time. Okay? Because the longer you wait, the harder it's going to get. Okay. Now let's talk about the fucking shit that I'm pissed off about. I am beyond myself. Okay. Now this this recall date was from January 19th. So I'm a little bit behind on this. But nobody freaking came and told me this. Not even the boys I know at the factory told me this. And I about blew my top today. It says Forest River Inc. is recalling certain 2022 to 2000, sorry, 2024 no boundaries or no bow and 2023 to 2024 RPOD and IBEX trailers. The fasteners for the independent suspension may loosen, allowing the independent suspension to, to detach. What the fuck? And you Forest River boys that watch and listen to my podcast, I can't believe you didn't share this with me. Are you afraid I was going to put on my podcast? You afraid I wasn't going to find out? I sell our pod. I sell Ibexes. But see, here's the difference. I've been saying when they came out with this beast mode package, I told every single person that I knew about that, that is the stupidest fucking idea on God's green earth. Independent suspension, yes, is a nice little upgrade. But when they're teardrop to middle-sized travel trailers, it is a waste of money, in my opinion. The off-road suspension trailers that are out there, and there's a lot of them, already dominate the off-road market. And the amount of money they're charging dealers for this Kurt suspension. Okay? Watch this. Is more money than people are willing to spend on a travel trailer. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Just to kind of backtrack myself a little bit. Because there's people going to be like. Oh, 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 independent suspension is perfect. Okay. Yes. If you want to put independent suspension on your RV, your fifth wheel, your travel trailer, whatever the case may be, and you want to do it aftermarket with a lot better quality independent suspension kit, fine. Perfect. A lot of times it's going to be beneficial. I know it will be a beneficial over the long run compared to just having an axle. Totally get it. Totally understand it not going to argue with you about it because I know that I, I would say just logically you're correct. But when it comes from the factory and they've never done it on the trailers before, what the fuck?
our pod is a teardrop lightweight travel trailer that most people don't go across the country in. And if they do, it's because they have a small little tow vehicle, little SUV, little lightweight truck like a Ranger or Colorado or a Canyon or a Tacoma. And they go 50, 55 miles an hour down the road. They don't go off into the dirt roads of beyond the fucking hills where the hills have eyes. They don't do that shit. They don't. They go to their little campgrounds. They go on little leveled out dirt roads to get to a lake. To get to a little campsite by a river. That's already like, everybody knows it's a campsite because it has a fire pit. It has a lockbox. To keep the bears out of the food. I warned them, man. And now they know why I don't want the suspension on anything I carry on the lot. The two R pods I have left on the lot do not have the independent suspension because it keeps it lighter weight, it keeps the cost down, and most importantly, that buyer is different. The folks that want to go off-roading, like seriously off-roading, they go buy Opus. They go buy Black Series. Well, probably not Black Series anymore, but they go buy all these, two. I call them the 2% brands. Because the off-road market is less than 2% of RV retail. You can argue with me about it, but I know the stats. Most folks, and I'm talking about the extreme off-roading. I'm not talking about going down Mr. Dirt Road that was kind of leveled out by a tractor or something and heading down to a lake. Talk about the guys with the big tire, you know, big old TRD trucks and they're going off-road and 4 by 4 with the trailer behind them. That's less than 2%. That's why a lot of the companies that the guys buy those things for are from Australia, not Indiana. So what the fuck were you thinking? I almost want to like do a Forrest Gump and just stare at every one of them that decided not to tell me about this and say, are you stupid or something? Were you dumb enough? And you wonder why your sales suffer. Because this is stupid. Now knowing them, knowing Forest River, knowing that division of Forest River, knowing the guy who oversees that division, it'll get taken care of and it'll be done right. But really? I hope they learn their lesson and stop doing independent suspension on a teardrop travel trailer. It's not necessary. Most of the trailers that we're talking about are less than 3,000 pounds. Independent suspension may detach. Oh my god. Just how ridiculous is that? Makes me want to just ah. <sighs> Look. I'll stick my foot up any manufacturer's ass. I don't care. It could be stuff I sell. Just like Arpod and Ibex. I'll stick I'll shove my foot so far up the rear end they won't see the light of day. Okay? Why? Because they need to get better. Okay? There's a lot of things that Forest River does right. But that's stupid. There's a lot of things Jayco does right. But again, nobody's perfect. Arctic Fox, not perfect. By the way, if you think that frames don't fail on Arctic Fox, 
I've gotten three emails, very sporadic. <coughs> three emails in the last four months of people of Arctic foxes that had some sort of frame problem. Arctic fox, of course, Northwood Manufacturing, <laughs> didn't even hesitate. And there's one thing I really want to say. Because if you made it this far, you really deserve to hear this. And Pete and Lisa, back me up on this, please. Grand Design RV is allegedly not reimbursing people for their hotel rooms while their momentum or solitude is being fixed at the factory. I'm not shitting you. It's 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 sick. Because I know Forest River, Keystone, Jayco, uh, KZ, Genesis Supreme, Northwood Manufacturing, they would bend over backwards. Stuff I sell, stuff I don't sell, they would bend over absolute backwards if your coach had to go back to the factory. Okay. And here's the interesting part. This is where I want to give Winnebago props. Because we've talked a lot of shit about Grand Design on this podcast. Let's give Winnebago a couple of props. Number one, their motorhome section has always been good. Okay. Towable suck. And they keep making things worse. But the motorized... If you had to go back to Forest City, Forest City, Iowa, sorry, that gets a little, me a little tongue tying. If you had to go back to Forest City, Iowa to have a major repair done, they put you up for free. Now, even though the hotels in Forest City, Iowa suck, if you didn't want those accommodations, if I remember right, they have like 500 campsites with full hookups, and they'll come out to your coach and repair it mobily at the campground. Now, I don't know if that still holds true, but that was true as of 2019. And I'm pretty sure they wouldn't stop that. See, that's what I'm referring to, guys. That's why I keep telling you that not every brand, not every company is this shitty. Okay? The the only thing I ever disagree with with crappy RV, and I like him. He's funny as hell. But the only, guy, the only thing I really ever disagree with him or Liz Amazing or any of these Armageddon level type of complaints is you know, even with Grand Design, all the allegations against Grand Design, set them aside for a second. Pretend they don't exist for a moment. The Lemon Law and Armageddon level problem rate in the industry is still less than the auto industry. Look it up yourself. The fi- the major problem rate of unsolvable problems, non-solution problems, is still less. And, and also, you have to understand something, because this is something that was mentioned in a few comments in... In, in different Facebook groups and different YouTube videos. Look, manufacturers of every manufacturer pays the door rate in service. So like my dealership, $180 an hour. Okay. Where they get you is, and this is why warranty work sucks for RV dealerships, RV service centers. They'll pay the hundred and eighty dollars an hour, but they want to pay what it they want to pay the time that it takes at the factory with the rig stripped down. Give you a great example. We just did a refrigerator replacement. Okay. And I'm gonna go more into detail on this um Monday. Because it takes them 15 minutes to put in and out a refrigerator out of a empty coach that has 
no walls, no doors. They want to pay half an hour when we have to take out a window in most cases. Or we have to take apart the refrigerator to fit it out the door. In most cases, to replace a refrigerator and hook it up properly with an assembled RV takes two hours minimum. And they want to pay 30 minutes. That's the reason why. It's not that they don't want to pay the rate. They don't want to pay the time. And then here's the other thing, guys, because this is what I don't think a lot of people understand. The reason why a lot of West Coast dealerships do not want to do warranty work, if you, so I'll give you an example. You're in Southern California, you drive all the way to Indiana because you save a total after gas and hotels and everything else, you save two grand because you don't have to pay the freight that Forest River or Keystone or whoever charges to ship it to California. Okay, great. No problem. But the reason why dealerships don't want to service your unit is not because necessarily that we don't get paid well. That's only one portion of it. The other portion is, is all the manufacturers, all the extended warranty companies want you to pay for the parts up front and then take their sweet ass time to get the money reimbursed. So dealerships in general have a fund for that, okay? And no offense to you folks that want to drive all the way to the factory to save a few bucks. But dealerships have a fund to buy parts for the warranty work. And they'd rather save that money for their own customers that bought from them because they want to take care of the people that spent the money with them. Now, there's some exceptions. Camping World more than likely takes everybody because it's a different animal when you're a camping world and you're as large as they are. It's a different animal. But if you're a mom and pop dealer, you're a smaller, what I call mid major, you own five, six, seven locations, but you're not a corporation like some corporate RV YouTubers are. So just think about that, okay? If you, I'll give you an example. You live, I have a guy that lives in Florida. He called me. I gave, we talked over the phone. He goes, I could save $4,000 by driving to Indiana. I go, okay, let's calculate your gas. Let's calculate this, let's calculate that. Okay, so realistically, you're saving 2500 bucks. He goes, yeah, it's the principle of the matter. And I explained this to him. I said, "Good luck getting it. For, uh, good, good luck getting it serviced, unless you buy it from Camping World themselves. Unless you're a Camping World, uh, unless it's sold at a Camping World, more than likely you're not going to get it serviced in Florida. Oh, they can't do that. I said, sure they can. They're an independently run company. They can do whatever they want." I said, they're never going to tell you straight out they're not going to service it, but they'll tell you, if you today's April 5th. They'll say, yeah, our next appointment is January, 1st, January 10th, 2025. Would you like to book that appointment? It's not personal against you because you wanted to go save money. It's because every dealership has a fund. And they don't want to spend that fund when they have... Let's say they're a, a small little dealer. They're selling 15, 20 units a month, 200, 300 a year. They want to take care of the people that bought from them first before they take care of anybody else. And a lot of times, it, it's not like every dealership has two, three million dollars in cash just laying around, guys. I use a credit card. Okay? There's only so much money I can put on the credit card. There's a limit to it. It's not like we're rolling around like billionaires and have a black card. It's not the way it works. And I'll go into more detail on Monday about it. Um, until then, have a good night and good weekend.